Dave and Dennis. And today, the return of an old friend on the Atheist Viewpoint. Hello and welcome to Atheist Viewpoint. I'm David Silverman, president of American Atheists. And I'm Dennis Horvitz. And with us back today from a long hiatus yes. is the former national spokesperson of American Atheists, the former host of the Atheist Viewpoint, mm -hmm. Ron Barrier, is coming back to Atheist Viewpoint. Welcome back, Ron. It feels good to be back, David. It really right. does. I, I, I just want to tell you that uh, when um, when Ellen asked me to be her co-host, I was absolutely petrified because I knew I was filling some very big shoes. Oh. And, and really, I'm serious. Um, and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do now. Oh. <laughs> well, well, I mean, you know, we, we, were, we were pretty uh, wacky and uh, freeform and did a, did a lot of things. And, I, I, and I'll tell you, the, the, the years with American Atheists were, 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 were very good for me. Uh, I, I never liked speaking in front of people. I was always petrified. And, and, and working with the, with, the, with the group and with Ellen, I you know, in a way you learn to uh, overcome those fears just by, by doing them. And, uh, and uh, it was really a joy to do. And, uh, so and you, you left the viewpoint about 10 years ago. It's been about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you guys and, and with, with the audience out there. You know, everyone has doubts. Everyone has doubts. And after working with American atheists for 12 years, um, you start to rethink things philosophically, and, and uh, you wonder if you're doing the right thing. And sometimes you have to step back. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to step back and look at the bigger picture. And, and, and one of the reasons I am back is because over the last 10 years, um, observing people, observing religions, studying them, and, and, and generally just immersing myself in the possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, I return convinced that really atheism is the right way to go. It, 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 it is a realization and it's a, it's a conclusion. So you went on a, a spiritual quest. You went, on, you, were, you, you went looking for God. I went looking to see whether I was right or wrong. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, you know, and coming to conclusion, uh, that's very atheistic of you, by the way. Well, <laughs> you, you know, nothing, nothing, no stone should be left unturned. And I even had to turn over the atheism, atheism stone. Uh huh. Okay. Of course. And, and look, and, and you know, and after ten years, really, of, of putting everything together and and, and listening and uh, even talking with rabbis and ministers and everything, I've essentially concluded uh, that. Uh, they have no idea, you know, what they're talking about, and uh, we have lots of ideas about what we're <laughs> talking about. <laughs> so, what got you to the point when you left? What what made you have second thoughts about atheism? And then I'm going to ask you what brought you back. Okay. There's, there's got to be some things that happened here. Tell us. It story. wasn't really probably second thoughts about atheism. That came that came later, but I I think. It would, with every activist organization, and I'm sure you know, many of you who, who belong to act, uh, activist organizations elsewhere, there's a point where you feel you, uh, you have a burnout, okay? And you need to recharge your batteries. Right. And I, th I think that's what I experienced, you're do doing all the traveling and you know, going to Canada and beating the crap out of William Lane Craig and, and doing other debates and stuff like that. After a while, you just get burnt out from all the travel, all the running around. I needed some time. Uh, to stop, 
be home with my family and to reflect on I was doing what you know on what I was doing mm -hmm. and uh, even to the point at one point in time for about a year and a half um, I was unemployed with the recession and you, you even start yeah, it's it's funny but even it entered my mind did I do something wrong am I being punished for something you know because people think like that and mm -hmm. you start to think like that and and being an ex-Catholic and knowing how the Roman Catholic Church browbeats, um, they stick with you. It's, yes. it's, it's really incredible how much that, dog, that dogmatic stance sticks with you and, and gets into your subconscious. Didn't the Ignatius Loyola say something about that, that if they get you by the time you're five or six or yeah. eight or nine, that they've basically got you? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I realize now that even though I... I, I learned a lot of stuff from them and uh, you know, of course in their dogma it, it, it never really took and and one of the first times i realized now going back on my life uh, that it didn't take when uh, i was about i think i was in seventh or eighth grade and you know we are taught in the catholic tradition that suicide is a mortal sin right okay now growing up as a kid in the late 50s early 60s and there uh we were exposed to a lot of world war ii movies John Wayne, Richard Mid Woodmark, all those guys. Sure. And the Japanese were always committing suicide. Right. It was honorable for them. Right. Right. So one day I went to the rectory and spoke with a priest. And he said, you know, Father, and, I, and I, I always had, I was always uncomfortable calling them Father because they're not my father. I have a father. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, if I committed suicide and died and went to hell, would hell be filled with Japanese? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and he gave me this convoluted answer that, you know, oh, you know, if they're honorable to their faith and this and that, uh, you know, that they follow their precepts and, and, and they have ethics and this and that, that, uh, you know, apparently his God will take that into consideration. That's the exact that, by the, way, the truth. <laughs> I went home thoroughly confused because I'm still convinced that hell was full of Japanese. At this that point. should right. be the title of your memoirs. Hell is full of Japanese. <laughs> I, I don't think that's a very good title for the memoir. Or, <laughs> is, or, or is hell filled with Japanese? Is hell filled with Japanese? Yeah. So, at least during so the, the World War II. Right? So you asked the priest if, if hell was filled with Japanese people because they committed suicide in World War II. Right. And he said, well, it's all up to their... It, it, that it, if it, they're it's yeah, amorphous. If, right. That is, if his God perceives that they they are following the path of their faith faithfully, then he would take that into consideration. And of course, I'm figuring out what how how the heck does he know that? Yeah, it's the exact opposite of what it's of what. The Bible well, says. was he referring to the God of the Japanese? No, that his God since Yahweh. see since his Yahweh. God is the only God. Right. But would but would take that in consideration, right? Ah, right. Uh, in other words, okay. what it was really was a backslap against other religions, saying their gods are irrelevant. Right. Right. You know. Of course. Well, he can't say that their god is real and our god is real, and 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 they're both right. perfect. But I mean, the cap, the Catholic religion doesn't leave room for 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 doubt here. If you're not Catholic, if you're especially if you're aware of Catholic Catholicism, and you deny it, and you commit uh, suicide. Yeah, you, you got one direction to go, and confession was another thing. I mean, if I did something wrong, even though they, you didn't. Uh, sometimes with confessions, you almost compelled to make up stuff just so you would go and tell them something. Right, right. You know, and I've heard uh, that before. Yeah, so you, so you, <laughs> you, took you some do. Time I off. have heard that before. So you took some time off from American atheists. Right, and uh, what happened? Well, I, 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 I used to be a musician before American atheists, and I had gotten away from it for a while. I went back into music because I find music to be, uh, I guess, philosophically and intellectually cleansing and satisfying. Uh, uh, music was the field that I was able to travel to Europe, travel to South America, meet different people in the music field, and realize that in secular fields, and that would be uh, music, science, art, uh, the humanities, you know, things that people are creative at. There are no differences. They put their religions aside. They put all these racism and religion is all pushed aside yeah. because yeah. this is more yeah. important. And I found that to be much more satisfying uh, uh, dealing with people 
on, on a human level with music than dealing with them on the uh, various levels of, uh, of uh, speculation that religion uh, occupies. Okay. And if music be the fruit of love, play on. Yeah. And you, and you got great joy from pe people enjoying it. Yes. You know, so you didn't need anything else. You didn't need money. You didn't need that. But just the joy of them uh, appreciating what you're doing was, uh, it, it was great. And you, you were just able to deal with so many people. And I always thought that really, like the arts, um, brought people together. Uh, whereas uh, faith uh, inherently devices, divides. inherently divides people. Right. You right. know, it, ju it just does. It has to. Yeah. Right. And um, atheism sometimes had a little bit of that uh, quirkiness to it because I think I, I had mentioned one time during the speech at an American Atheist Convention that I didn't want to be with a group of people who thought alike. Right. All right. If I wanted to go to meet with people who thought like me or thought alike, then we might as well just open up our chur a, a church and close down American Atheists. Right. So, but through atheism, a lot of that diversity all comes together. And people can disagree, and people can argue, and people can uh, interrelate with one another and, and, and uh, uh, have all sorts of interactions. But you never, ever have the kind of hostility when you challenge a faith. I don't take my atheism personal. It is right. what it is. It is what it is, right. Whereas if you challenge a person's uh, religion, like when I left, I left the Catholic Church first at 18. The moment I moved out of the house and got away from Catholic high school, I was never going back. Mm -hmm. I, I just knew it never took. Mm -hmm. right. Okay? So, I, I had lost my train of thought a little bit there. But I just find that with, with, with when I did, they, people take it personally. Right. As, so if you say to someone, well, you know, I, I just don't believe that a, that a virgin could, could, could give a birth. You know, it just, it just doesn't happen. It only happens in religious stories. It doesn't happen in the real world. They take that personally. Right. They feel, uh, and I can tell you right now, my parents and probably uh, any atheists who are watching this, their parents, if they were religious parents, uh, they feel that they failed. They take it personally. Right, right. That there was a failure in, in, in their ability to bring you up properly. Well, that's you know, part of the that's part of the scam that is religion. Exactly, you know? and, and I found that, that that that's damaging. Why should my parents uh, take the blame if I choose a different philosophical lifestyle? You know, I'm not robbing. I'm not the c committing crimes. I'm not. We're not doing any of that stuff. It's just a disagreement. Well, they have failed to brainwash you. That's what they failed to do. They failed to brainwash you. And, and, but it was a church that failed. But they take it upon themselves to think that they failed. Well, it's because the church tells them that they failed. Right, right. The church right. will never say, we failed. The church says, you failed for not bringing them to church right. often enough. Right. You mm -hmm. failed for not bringing them to Sunday school often enough. You failed for not teaching them this at home. We're the church. We're beyond reproach. We do everything right. You did it wrong if you're the parent and you have a non-believing kid. But I really want to go back to you going on this journey and how you came back. Uh, you're, you're, you're out, you got your hair long, you got your bass out, you're, oh, you're, you're I, doing yeah, yeah. your thing, and all of a sudden, I get a call from Ron Barrier uh, out of the blue. Well, that's because I saw you on Stephen Colbert. Ah. <laughs> on the Colbert Report. Because, uh, you know, uh, I'm a faithful viewer of Daily Show and Colbert Report. All right, all right. I prefer to take my news uh, the way they present it with a grain of truth. <laughs> yeah. It's a good way to put it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Unlike Fox News, which is half a grain of truth. Uh, <laughs> Fox News to me is, is essentially unwatchable. Yeah. It, yeah. it is unwatchable. I mean, uh, unless and I, and I'm I can on. tell you from. Uh, unless I'm on. And right. I can tell you from experience. In which case, it's great. You know, I had been on O'Reilly, I had done Sean Hannity. Right. And Sean Hannity. Uh, have you done Hannity yet? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if he hit you with the same stupid question. Sean Hannity has this irritatingly dumb way of dealing with atheists. First of all, whenever he has a religious person, he always treats them with respect. Mm -hmm. Never says anything. When I came on the show, 
He goes, all right, Ron Barry, American atheist, so you don't think there's a greater power than yourself. Now, I never said that. They've never said that. You've never said it. I've never read it anywhere in any atheist writings or speeches that any atheist thought that there was no higher power than themselves. I notice that every day when I leave my apartment. Everything's afraid of me. <laughs> I have to, I have to, listen, I have to. Well, high, higher, wife, powers, but higher powers are relative statements. It, right, and it is right. relative. It means nothing. Right. But the point of Sean Hannity saying it is to create hostility towards you for his audience. Of course. Right at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. sure. You know, and, and, and it, it just really bothered me because after the shows, I would ask him, how come you never asked anybody else what God they believe in? You only asked me. Mm-hmm. Because he, he wouldn't do it. If he had a Muslim guy there, he wouldn't tell him his faith is wrong or he wouldn't do any of those things. So this stupid, uh, somebody else said it to me, what, what does this mean that there's no higher power? I, I can rattle off 300 powers easily that are greater than me. All right? A 100-pound boulder, gravity, <laughs> uh, electromagnetism, uh, a meteor falling out of the sky. The IRS. The IRS. <laughs> you know, uh, a big burly guy. <laughs> Right. I mean, I mean, this this whole thing. I mean, I I I, it, I am at a loss for words when I hear. But yet, the people who ask that question actually think that they're asking something profound. Right. And it's it's nonsense. That's right. You know. Tide goes in, tide goes out. <gasps> <laughs> Perfect example. I'll tell you. <laughs> So, so you're watching Stephen Colbert, mm -hmm. but so first of all, I want to know what brought you to this conclusion that you have that, I mean, was there any sort of a moment during this past decade where you said, oh yeah, that's why I'm an atheist? No. I took a scientific approach. Okay. And I tested everything as I went by. Mm -hmm. All right. Applied my atheism filter, apply the religion filter, because I feel, you know, coming from a religious background and being an atheist, you're kind of uh, uh, equipped from both sides mm -hmm. to look at both sides of that same coin. Right. And it, for 10 solid years, no matter what it was, atheism is the better explanation. Mm -hmm. Atheism presented evidence for its explanation. Um, there was just no way around it, to, 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 to the point where I, I just concluded that what, the, what these people are thinking is that for this indeterminable amount of time in some indeterminable or undeterminable dimension, this entity existed all by himself. Mm -hmm. And then one day decided, you know what, I'm going to make a universe. And in this universe, this vast universe uh, that we now know is expanding, um, I'm going to put some people on a rock. And then I, I looked at the story. Okay, so let me see. He does this. He does that. He does Adam. He does Eve. And two people into creation, everything goes kaplooey. Not good planning. Right. <laughs> Especially not for an omniscient God. Yeah, yeah. For, for an omnipotent, all-knowing God, very poor planning. Right. I could have done that. Yeah. All right. Two kids, murder. Very poor. Plan. Well, not only that, in the, the great flood story, the story of Noah, it says God repented of his decision to create humans. He, he, he basically admitted he screwed up. Yeah. Which brings me to a second aspect of what Dave talks about, the idea of perfection. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. After really contemplating it and thinking about it for a long time, a perfect being cannot make a decision, especially if they know past, present, and future. Right. They cannot decide. That's correct. They cannot regret. That's correct. Essentially, what you have is just a giant mass of inertia. Yeah. That right. Do, that and does right. nothing. He's aware. He can be aware, but he can only watch because whatever he does, he already did. Because Perfection is knows. stasis. Yeah. He, I would yeah. never want to be perfect. I would never want perfection. I would never want certainty. To me, uncertainty is the great, that's, that's the fuel that seeds doubt and exploration and asking questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems to me that in the face of an omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, perfect, and eternal being, the 
concept of creation is meaningless. It just means nothing. Yeah, it makes no it, sense. It, it's not about, it, it doesn't make any sense, right? Right. Then the whole thing breaks down. So then what is he going to do? Hmm, let me see. I've made millions of people now, and there's all sorts of chaos going on. Let me make one more person and then have him publicly executed for everyone's benefit. That's a sick mind. Oh, yeah, he's a sick God. You know, that's a very, very disturbed, disturbing thought process. Or, or as I like to put it, God impregnated a virgin in order to give birth to himself, in order to be sacrificed to himself, in order to sit beside himself, in order to save the world from himself. Right. <laughs> a big bag of nuts. We've got, <laughs> we've got two minutes left on the show. We didn't, really? even, we didn't even talk about the case, so we'll, we'll be talking about the Supreme Court case on the next show. Uh, in the meantime, sh in the meantime, Ron, um, how long are you back now? Forever? Are you back now for the long haul? I take everything on a day-to-day -day basis. That's that's my philosophy. So I am back as long as I can keep sitting. Well, welcome back. You know, right. you know. Can I can I just interrupt really briefly? Um, this as we're taping the show, uh, the tsunami and the er the earthquake and oh. tsunami and the uh, uh, nuclear reactors in um, in Japan have gone haywire. So if you want to, please, we urge you to give uh, to non-believers giving aid or any of the other charities or organizations dealing with that. I just wanted to get that no, in before right. the show and was over. No, that's right. it's not God's will, and there's right. another higher power, the planet Earth. There's mm -hmm. another, you know, good old-fashioned physics. Power that we have. All we have is us. Uh, American Atheist is America's premier nonprofit organization by and for the non-religious community. You can see us at atheists.org and come to our national convention where Christopher Hitchens, P.Z. Myers, Greta Christina, Matt Dillahunty, and uh, Jeff Charlotte will be there along with Matthew Chapman, uh -huh. who will be premiering his, uh, his new movie starring Liv Tyler. It'll be in Des Moines, Iowa, April 21st to the 24th, uh, uh, atheists.org slash convention. Uh, thank you for joining us, and welcome back, Welcome Ron. back, Ron. Welcome back. I'll be seeing you again. Yes, right. you will. Uh, I'm David Silverman. Dennis Horvitz. Ron Barrier. Have a great day. Uh, thank you for joining us on Atheist Viewpoint, where reason reigns and reality rules.